everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix and today we're going to be having some fun with advanced networking on Linux uh, for instances or for cases when we're running mainframe operating systems on top of emulators such as Hercules or SimH or any other uh, mainframe emulator or, or computer emulator and we need to get access to and from the operating system that's running on top of the emulator. Now, there are two ways to do this. Uh, there's the Windows way and there is the Linux way. As most of you may know, I am I'm not very, as I like to say, I'm not uh, very premium on Windows. I don't know uh, very much about Windows networking. I can just get it to run uh, for things like browsing the web and recording these videos and uploading it to YouTube, but not much more than that. On Linux, uh, I know quite a bit more. I wouldn't say I am the top expert or, or a top expert on Linux networking, but I know enough to get by. And so today we're going to be having some fun getting networking to and from uh, a mainframe operating system, in this case Linux, uh, Linux, the uh, IBM mainframe version of or port of Linux, to run on top of Hercules on top of Linux running inside my uh, cluster of um, hosts running ESX. Um, so for all intents and purposes you can see here I have a cluster with one, two, three uh, machines. These are all uh, Intel Nooks. Uh, they run perfectly fine. They have all each about 32 gigabyte of RAM and NVMe disks which makes them very very fast and so that's always plenty enough for this kind of stuff that we do in this channel I don't do any real production work um, but um, so this is the environment I'm in and here I have this uh, virtual machine uh, running uh, Linux uh, this is this machine here you can see um, and uh, and inside here I have a, an instance uh, of uh, Debian for the Z architecture and we're going to be starting it and then we're going to see how to get access into the virtual machine and then out of the out of inside the yeah the, the Hercules guest and out of the Hercules guest. Uh, I, I, would ask, I would like to ask you here to bear with me with all the uh, terms. Um, there's many ways to call these things. Uh, how would you call an instance of an operating system running on top of Hercules is the guest machine. Well, yes, it could be called a guest machine, even though it's not just a guest. It's not a virtual machine. It's a virtual computer. Uh, it's an emulated computer. So the terms here are not defined. And maybe in a university setting, you would start to use different terms. And I come from a virtualization background, by the way. I, uh, this is what I've done most of my professional life. Uh, create software for virtualization but but uh, the terms here are kind of in flux and uh, so I'll try to express myself as clearly as I can if there's questions of course then refer uh, to making comments below this video also um, uh, once again I would like to uh, uh, mention the discord channel where we have a lot of experts and, and, and interested enthusiasts hanging out and answering questions and helping each other. And there's also the Moshik's uh, channel on uh, Facebook and the description on how to get to the Discord channel as well as on the Facebook page for the Moshik's mainframe channel are in the description below this video. So let's get going. So I have this, uh, uh, I have this uh, Debian here. Um, the disk images are here. We have three uh, disk images. And then I have, uh, as you see here, a printer directory and the reader directory. And it looks like I have some C code here. I'm not sure, I don't remember what that is. Oh yeah, it's a Fibonacci. It's a Fibonacci uh, code. Let me just, for the sake of it, let's just try to compile it. Oh, I don't even have uh, the compiler installed. Better like that. So let's. Um, not waste any time with C here. So then uh, here is the uh, configuration for my Hercules. Let's see here what we have. I give it four gigabytes of RAM, as you can see here. Let's make this a little bigger. 
but it's easy for all of you to read. Okay, so I give it um, four gigabytes of RAM. I give it four CPUs and we tell it it's a Linux so that uh, Hercules knows what to do with it. Architecture mode is ESA or ESA ESME. Um, console is 00F and then the the um, Linux uh, images on those DASTIs, those are 3390s type 3, 3 gigabytes each. So, and then the most important part here is we have a network adapter, which in this case is a CTCI, channel to channel adapter. And it needs OS2. It needs the one for going in, one for going out, and they no, don't need to be, but it's better if they're adjacent. 0A00, 0A01 in my case. Um, this is the device we're going to use, the tunnel interface of Linux. So thin Linux has already tunnel interface. Windows doesn't, and that's why on Linux you need to install something like Fishes, um, which is the primary developer of Hercules. He has a company called Software Development Labs. Let me call here Fish. Um, Fish Software Development Labs. Um, just I'll just mention this once here for Windows. He has this product, and this is what it is here: CTCI Win. If you search for Software Development Labs and then Quality Hercules Software, you'll go here. It's $44 and this does what uh, comes for free with Linux. That's why I don't really waste much time with Windows at all. But it, there is a software that does this, the tunneling. It tunnels between the Ethernet interface and it creates a tunnel between the interface and something that's that's run something else. And so then you can, you can put, um, you can route your traffic through that tunnel. It's really just a tunnel. Uh, here we give it a packet size of 1500, which is the standard Ethernet packet size. And I would advise not to muck too much with this. I've had mixed success in changing that. And then here, there's two addresses. This is the address of that, that the interface, this interface will have on the Linux machine, on the real box. This is the real, I call this the real hardware, even though it's actually a virtual machine itself. And this is the um, IP of the interface inside Z Linux. This is Z Linux. I can uh, put it here. Okay. Okay. So if you look at it this way, these are the addresses of the two machines. Very important to understand that you need to give it both addresses. And as you know, right now, there's really only just this network interface running, and the tunnel only comes up when you launch it. And so it's not there until we start the Hercules emulator with that with that configuration. So let's do that. Uh, I always work with screen um, to have multiple virtual sessions. Some people like Tmux. The good thing about Tmux is you can do stuff like this, split in two. We could do that. Um, why not? Um, you have to choose one and stick with one. So um, let's do like this. Okay, so now if I switch to the other uh, virtual session, then if we look what happens here, now suddenly we have a tunnel. Okay, this is this tunnel here uh, that we just saw in the configuration. And that already has this IP address. Now, before I start things, um, this is ready to get started. It's not running yet. Okay, let me switch. Uh, as you see here, it's not running yet. It's ready to run. But uh, we see these two devices, channel to channel adapters, uh, 3088. Those were devices you could buy from IBM in the old days. They would, they would, they would attach two channels, which are the I.O. devices of, uh, of an IBM mainframe to each other so they could communicate. And kind of like, it's not serial. Those were actual parallel interfaces, but it's kind of like a serial null modem, if you remember what those were. Um, Serial, serial null modem. What those were is a cable that you could attach on two sides and they communicate each other by swapping two pins. Uh, I think pin, if I'm not mistaken, pin nine, but I, I could be totally wrong here. If I, I don't really remember so well. But I used to build his own cables actually. Back in the old days, I used to build my own null modem cables. And so a 3088 is actually just a device that, that inverts a few pins on one channel 
and connects it to the other. Now, um, now that we have saw what this is here, uh, there's some more work we need to do. Now, uh, let's switch to the other window here. And the one thing that we need to understand that is that the way that Ethernet discovers uh, MAC addresses, okay, this is a MAC address here, is through a protocol called ARP. Okay. ARP is a protocol for Ethernet that has nothing to do with TCP IP. This is on a lower level uh, on the OSI scheme um, that discovers interfaces, and that's how any switch works. It has an ARP protocol that discovers um, network interfaces on a on a on a wire level, on an Ethernet, on a on a hardware level, and and uh, and they don't easily cross. So. The problem is that once we start this Linux here, this is running inside this interface, uh, this is inside the emulated mainframe, and it and Linux here on the on the real physical machine doesn't know much about what's going on inside, and because those two are cut off, and therefore we need to enable ARP proxying so that this could act as a proxy for the ARP ins of the Linux running inside the Hercules uh, virtual computer. That's why I have always a set of, uh, so a set of scripts, uh, or this particular script, which sets everything uh, going. So, um, first of all, what I do in the script is, um, this is of course part of the invocation of the script, the shebang, uh, the Unix shebang, so that we can start the bash shell. Then I uh, reset all the IP tables, which is the internal firewall of Linux, so that there's there's no firewall rules and I can have input anything, coming in anything, out thing, outgoing any, anything, and forwarding between in network interfaces. Because what we need to understand is that once we start the tunnel, we have two network interfaces next to the loopback, which is a virtual network, network interface. Uh, so uh, again, there are right now three network interfaces. The Ethernet, which is the real network interface. This is the loopback, just a, just, uh, a virtual loop. Um, um, interface so we can have uh, minimum TCP IP working even when there's no Ethernet card installed and then we have the tunnel interface TUN0 so um, what this does is then it creates network address translation so that anything going in um, uh, that needs to go to this address will be network address translated going into the tunnel and so you need to, if you don't know what network address translation is, then you need to look it up. Uh, network address translation. Um, for remapping one IP address. So it's a technology for remapping one IP address space into another. So what we do is remap this address space into the standard network interface, which in my case is 192.168.10. And so um, that's how I had gained access to the virtual machine. I set up this with this rule here for the firewall of Linux. I set up a network address translation going through interface ETH0 uh, for, this, um, for this kind of addresses with a 24 net mask, which is a full class C uh, IP range. And then we forward anything that needs to go into that address space will go through the tunnel. And of course, everything coming out of the Z Linux inside Hercules will also go through the tunnel. And then this is very important. We need to set IP forward so that Linux will forward packets between these two network interfaces, tunnel zero and ETH zero. So they will enable it. And number two is we need to have the pro this needs to act, tunnel zero needs to act as a proxy for ARP protocol requests on both sides. And if you have this working, um, then you get network between the two uh, areas, between the Z Linux and the Linux on the, underneath. And if you don't have any of this, it will never work. So it's very important. I will copy the script in the description below this video so that everybody can have access to it. Uh, but it's very important to understand that these steps need to happen. You need to reset your firewall. Uh, of course, if you still want firewall, then set it up later the way you want it. But uh, first of all, I reset it to zero because this will also release, remove any network address translation rules. 
and then we add this rule for network address translation um, through the interface that you have on your Linux system and for, um, for the um, network um, IP range which the Linux inside Hercules will see and we masquerade okay masquerade means do net do a network address translation and then we forward packets between the two sides and then finally we allow IP packets to be forward between the two network interfaces and we allow tunnel zero tunnel zero to act as a proxy for um, um, for ARP requests protocol requests come from both sides so before I even start anything I run this this uh, script okay there's no output but it sets a few things right and now we can start our Linux and I do L oops I need to switch to the other window I'm here as you can see I do IPL from E and it's already booting as you call it in the Linux world and I go to this side let's see what the overhead is here as you can see here it's starting to work maybe I make the font a little bit smaller appearance I make it um, 16 okay so we have more output in the same window. As you can see here, this Linux box is now starting to be quite busy. Um, and Linux is coming up. So, yep, yeah, here it is. It's up. The login is here. So now um, we should see the interface and we should be able to ping the instance inside. So what is the IP uh, address of Linux inside? As you remember, we have the set, this is the IP address of Linux here, the one that we see running here. So let's ping it. Yep, and it's already pinging it. And the network address translation is working. So now, and we're not quite there, we're not quite done yet. Um, we can SSH into it by SSHing into this address. Well, I know why. Um, I'm using the version of uh, Hercules uh, that comes with TK4, which is um, which is version created by Jurgen Winkelmann that comes with TK4. Now here, um, all the cryptology stuff, which is used for SSL, which SSH is based on, needs to be loaded um, dynamically. So uh, LD mod then crypt. Um, it may be too late. I should have maybe run it uh, before. Yeah. So we have to unfortunately uh, shut down this instance. Bear with me. But it's good you saw this. So the command is ld mod load module then crypt. And that's only if you use their Hercules um, binaries that come with TK4, the amazing MVS 3.8 A distribution of Jurgen Winkle Winkleman. Um, but unfortunately, we have to uh, reboot I, um, uh, uh, Z Linux here because it didn't it didn't come up nicely because of those the module was failing, missing. So we have to stop this the hard way. I hope Linux will come up again. Okay, and we re IPL again. So, okay, let's hope. Linux will come up nicely. We just this, what I just did stop all is the, is the equivalent of yanking the power cable from a Linux from a computer running Linux. It doesn't like it very much, but it should recover because I use ext4 as the file system, which is a journaling file system. And as you know, journaling file system is a transactional file system in the sense that it first writes into a log what it is about to change. And so, if something happens in between, it will always be either going back to the old version or to the new version. 
Um, let's see here how fast this comes up. In the meantime, let's see when the TCP, okay, so the TCP IP stack is up. Yeah, so let's try this. Yes. And I'm in. As you can see, this works now. And, but however, if I try to ping the outside world, I cannot ping it. And why? Because I need to add a route. So now I'm inside the Linux here that's running inside Hercules. Okay, um, this is the Linux that you see here on the right pane. This is not the Linux on uh, the underlying Linux under Hercules. This is Z Linux, and you can see it from here. S390, okay. So uh, how do we access the outside world? Well, we have this network interface here, CTC0, channel to channel adapter zero, with this with this IP address, and it goes through a, a tunnel um, through the ton zero. This guy here, okay. So this is all perfectly set up. I hope you follow me. If you don't, shout. Uh, now will be a good time to stop me. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so let's look at the routing table. The routing table is is not really set up yet. So we set up the routing table route at default gateway. Okay. So we tell it that this is the default gateway, and now. So DNS already worked, and that's it. It's out. So what ha what's happening here is that um, the packets go out through, first of all, so through what Linux thinks is a real channel-to-channel -channel adapter, but really it goes through um, the uh, Tunnel Zero interface, this one, which is uh, managed by Hercules. From there it goes through ETH0, which is the real network interface that Linux is, but it's actually also virtual because all this is, if you remember, is running here on top of ESX. So from there it goes to ESX. From ESX it goes through the real network interface, the physical hardware iron interface card of this NUC, of this Intel NUC computer, small computer. From there it goes to my switch. From my switch it goes to my gateway, my router, First to my firewall, from my firewall it goes to a router, from the router it goes to the internet provider in, uh, in my home lab here. So that and, that, and then it goes back the same route again. So now we have this set up. So we can now, as you just saw, um, get, get in and out. Okay, I, I create an additional window here. Um, And, and we have all this working. However, there is a problem. I can only access the windows that inside this pane only from the same Linux computer on which Hercules is running. How do I SSH now, let's say from this Windows computer, in directly into, into Linux? For that, we need uh, an additional command. And so I will exit this window so I have a little bit more space. And I will exit this also. I won't be needing this anymore. So to for us to be able from this Windows computer to go straight into the Zilinux without first having to SSH into this computer. And by the way, this doesn't have to be SSH. This could be any product. It could be web. It could be uh, 3270 emulation, right? For those people who need that. Um, it could be anything. It could be FTP, anything. So think about all protocols. It has nothing to do with SSH alone, uh, especially for some of the folks here running some other operating systems, 31-bit uh, or 64-bit operating system on top of Hercules. <clears throat> so um, how do we do that? We need to set up a SOCAT. Okay, SOCAT is not installed, so we install it. I have uh, Ubuntu here, so I will first do an apt update, package update. And then we we'll do socket examples. Socat is is a version of cat, the network um, cat, which has been redone 
to do sockets um, so it's it works with sockets but um, this examples are not very good okay let me see if we find something here yeah so now we do apt install socat uh, any kind of Linux has socat installed it's also very easy to compile so now we need to command to run a command and the socat command is as follows uh, oh yeah socat and then we say tcp listen and the capital the caps here are very important we say 22 which is well let's actually say 1022 so we don't uh, interfere with the 22 socket for the linux of the real uh, of this linux here that we're looking here so when we connect to 1022 with ssh it will forward this to the 22 port um, for the socket of Z Linux, okay. We say fork. What this means is that uh, do this for every connection. So don't don't block a connection to 1022, but allow as many as possible uh, as as needed. And then we say TCP 10. Dot, and the internal IP. And you can see it here. Uh, where was it? Yeah, uh, 22, which is the SSH port. So what I'm bear you know this is the command you want to look at here let's make this full screen so i listen on the tcp ip protocol on port 1022 i will accept connections on that i will fork immediately so anytime a connection comes in i'll make this port available again and then i'll forward it to this port 10 to this ip address 10.1.1.2 which is of course the ip address of Zilinux running right now inside this mainframe to port 22 and then I put an ampersand so that it goes into the background okay so that is now working and if we know that the IP address of the Linux here is 90 so this is the IP address I can now start I can now say new session and if I connect to 10 22. If I if I connect, of course, to 22, I will reach Linux here, the one that we see here. But if I put in 1022, then I actually connect to the Linux. Let's see if this works. Root, which you should never do, obviously, but this is all for educational purposes. And of course, it's a little bit slower because this is all emulated, um, but works fine. So we are now, we just SSH'd straight into it. So this could be now anything, FTP, web, uh, 3270 protocol over, over TCP IP, anything you like. Um, and I hope you understand what I'm saying here. So this uh, is the way to play with networking in an emulated. Uh, environment so um, just to close up before we close up I just want to show you what we did is we show um, we show first of all how to set up a tunnel okay there's other ways to do it by the way there's channel to channel adapter and then there is an LCS interface but um, channel to channel adapter works very lively both work lively but this is today i'm just showing the channel to channel adapter way and and the, the two network interfaces one for in one for out you say uh which device you want which is the tunnel interface the packet size of the ethernet packets this is the ip of the machine inside hercules this is the ip of the underlying physical machine which in my case as we all know is, is a virtual machine itself but disregarded for the moment this could be just a linux box um, then we saw uh, how to set up the network and I will copy this script here in the description below this video and that's what you will need to use and um, so that we can have first we reset the firewall then we set up network address translation here then we forward the packets back and forth then we turn on IP forwarding between network interfaces and Linux and then we turn on proxying for the ARP protocol requests 
then once we started remember to if you use the tk4 version of hercules uh, to load the crypt uh, module dyne crypt dynamic crypt and once uh, once you've set it up um, then inside um, inside the linux here we do a route protocol so that we can route out of the channel to channel adapter which is okay by this command route add default gateway okay that's it that's the command that's all it takes and now you have uh, tcp ip going in and out and then the final part is the socat command this one here which sets up port forwarding so you can access the the instance running on top of Hercules or CMH or whatever from outside the box where it's running and this is my custom port I could have taken any port 200 600 6000 24000 uh, fork so we can restart the port immediately again make it free again for other connections we forward inside the IP of Linux to the standard SSH port and that's all there really is to it so um, I hope you follow it this was a little technical session but I know a lot of people know a lot about mainframes um, but they may not necessarily know um, TCP IP networking or Linux and so I hope this uh, all helped you uh, get a better grasp on how to make things work that's how I make it work if there's any questions, put comments in the uh, in the below this video. If you like this video, please do press on the thumbs up button. I always like those. Subscribe to the Moshix Mainframe channel if you haven't done so, and press on the notification so you get notified when new videos come out. Um, also, uh, please do join us on our Discord channel. The links are in the description below this video, or come check out now and then our Facebook page to get uh, involved with the rest of the community and this amazing community that we've created here in the Moshe Explainer channel. And see you soon again. Thank you very much. Goodbye.